time. I'm talking to you guys here from Germany. I just spent uh, about 10 days in Marbella, Spain, uh, coaching some tennis ball clients there. Tremendous success, great results as usual. And now we're here in Munster, Germany. And sure enough, I found some time to shoot some video for you guys. So let's get right to it, guys. I'm um, gonna talk a little bit about the follow through today, the finish of the ground stroke, because it's so important to emphasize this part of the stroke. I feel that a lot of club players have difficulty with it and uh, mostly have difficulty not just doing it, but understanding how they did it or, or if they did it right or wrong. So today I'm gonna give you guys a very nice tip so you can really check on it and, and, and get your own immediate feedback as you're practicing out there so that you uh, understand better uh, you know, the quality of your follow through. So here's my suggestion to you guys. When you, when you finish your stroke, rather you're hitting a forehand, a one-handed forehand, or a one-handed backhand, or a two-handed backhand, if you're a lefty out there, remember I don't forget you guys, you know, the forehand over here, or the one-handed backhand here, or the two-handed backhand, it's really important to finish the stroke well. And to make sure that you do that, one great way to practice is by freezing the stroke for a split second on the end. So that you can, first of all, check if you did it, and also check how you did it. So, um, I see a lot of club players out there that when, 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 they're, when they're swinging and the stroke finishes, it barely gets to the end and they kick it back already, like if you had like something like a spring-loaded swing. It kind of looks like this. I'll demonstrate a little bit for you guys. You see this person that tries to hit the forehand and, and they go like this, you know? The stroke is over and it comes back right away. So they can't really grasp how, 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 did, how did that follow through finish. On a two-handed backhand too, we see the same thing. You know, you go like this and boom, racket barely gets to the end here and it comes back already. So this type of player is not really sure if, if he went to here or if he went to here or if he went to here or if he went all the way here. A one-handed backhand, the same thing. See some players out there that will get the ball and already bring the racket back. You might notice some of the pro players that really have smooth strokes. They have the tendency to have a little split second freeze on the stroke right on the end. It gives an emphasis to that follow through. And also, like I said, when you're out there practicing, you can really tell if your wrist stayed in the right position, or if you did something funny with it, if you had a little flick. Whatever you did, the end of the stroke will tattletale and tell you, okay? So here's my suggestion. When you're out there practicing, just have a little split second freeze on the end of your stroke, and you'll see how, how it really helps you with the quality of your follow through. Let's say if you're hitting a forehand, for example, rather you're hitting with a classic, you know, over the head follow through, or with a modern across the body follow through, I'll demonstrate both. You'll see that a little bit of a hold on the end does wonders for you. So it looks like this, guys. Let's do like a close stance, classic follow through. And when I finish the stroke, I stop for a split second and then I come back, which is different than doing it like this. Why do the players bring the racket right down so fast, coach? I've asked that before. It's sort of like uh, almost a frequently asked question even. The reason why a lot of players bring it right back and have this spring-loaded swing, I believe, in my humble opinion, is because the players are really anxious to get back on the ready position to get ready for the next shot. But I'll tell you, that little split second that it takes for you to hold it here on the end and bring it down, your ball is basically still in flight to the other side or bouncing, and your opponent's still hitting it. it is, you know, it, you're not gonna not be ready in time just because you didn't hold it for a split second, okay? So try doing it when you're out there mostly practicing, not in the middle of your league match, because then it's a little harder to do. But when you're practicing, hold your stroke on the end and you'll see what it does for you. Let's go for a full total demonstration now, okay? So let's go first for like a closed stance forehand, open stance forehand, I'll do both kinds, so that's four. And then we'll do the one-handed backhand and the two-handed backhand, okay? So here we go. Get four balls here. You get the close stance forehand with the classic follow through. And I'll hold the end here for a second and then I bring it down. I'll have the close stance forward, you know, and then uh, I'll have the across the body follow through. 
and then I'll go here, and then I'll finish here and hold for a split second. Now I have the open stance. Open stance, classic follow through. You go here, hold it for a split second. Across the body, here, hold it for a split second. Hit the ball and freeze for a split second when you finish and check it out even. You can see how it looks, if you did it completely or not. Let's do two-handed back here now. So, got my four balls here. I'm ready to demonstrate. Close stance. Stepping in as I hit it, shorter ball. I'm gonna slow down, I'm gonna stop and freeze my stroke on the end. Ready guys? Here we go, tall, and I go, boom, and I freeze, and then go back. Let's say open stance, two-handed back in now. I turn, freeze, stop. And now one-handed back in, pop, freeze, and then go back. Oh, I noticed when I froze here that I was like this. I didn't quite do this, so I didn't brush the ball and use the wrist correctly when I hit it. Oh, thanks to stopping here, I could see that. So now I'm gonna do it again and do it better. So now I go, ah, see, now I use my wrist. So once again, when you stop on the end, you can really tell what you did. Okay, guys, that's the tip. Freeze your stroke for a little bit when you finish, and you will be able to see much better what you did. And it also contributes for emphasizing that portion of the stroke, which is so key and important. Okay, guys, that's it. Wrapping it up here from Munster, Germany, and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.